Welcome to WBC Faster Together, the LinkedIn Live series of Women Business Collaborative. I'm Gwen Young, Chief Operating Officer of WBC. And today we are here to talk about women in corporate tech executive positions across industries. And we're joined by Anjali Sheikh of Deloitte, who is a woman technology leader herself. WBC is an unprecedented alliance of over 75 women business organizations and hundreds of business leaders, building a movement to achieve equal position, pay and power for all women in business. The collaboration, advocacy, action and accountability, we are mobilizing thousands to create momentum and accelerate the pace of change. We live our commitment to DEI and members of our leadership, a diverse board of directors and advisory and leaders councils include more than 34% people of color. Please check the chat for our nine action initiatives through which we aim to accelerate change and join our movement at wbcollaborative.org. Each week in this series, we offer different ways to advocate change and accelerate impact by presenting data research and best practices, by lifting up the power of women's voices for change, and by showing the importance of cross-generational collaboration and the allyship of men in the movement. Today, we want to talk about women leading in technology positions across industries and the upcoming release of WBC Women Corporate Tech Executives in America report. Welcome, Angela. It's nice to see you today. Thank you, Gwen, and thanks for having me. I'm excited for our conversation today. I am as well. Let's start with the report. As I mentioned, we're about to release the Women Corporate Tech Executives in America report. And we wrote this not only to showcase women leading in C-suite across industries, but to discuss the pathways to tech leaderships and the types of positions available. You and I were talking before, why is this important and what is unique about this report? You know, uh, one of the things and I think when we had first started ideating on the report and, and collaborating on it is that this report really serves as a starting point for the discussion on the current situation. It provides a view of uh, recommended action steps um, for uh, with more women in tech um, and also gives a lens, I think, on where the change needs to happen, but most importantly, kind of gives that view of what are the career paths to the C-suite for more tech-savvy women. I think the main point around drawing more attention to the continuing need for more equity um, and gender diversity at the C-suite level and all ranks of women in technology and what the pathways are for them to get there is so important. Um, there's opportunities with the different proliferation of the roles within technology. You know, you have at the C-suite level, a number of uh, roles, uh, CISOs, CDOs, CTOs, um, that all provide a kind of a unique pathway for women that are tech curious, like you and I were discussing. I think um, it shares a, a vast variety of viewpoints from more than a dozen authors, uh, subject matter experts in the field. So, you know, in reading through kind of the early draft, I'm really excited about kind of the key recommendations and and perspectives from all of the various people that have contributed to such an important topic. Um, I think uh, today, as organizations are really looking to develop a workforce um, that can address business challenges through technologies, um, and on the flip side, CIOs are really struggling with tech talent shortage. This report is so timely in uh, shining a light or, or creating a spotlight on the number of careers available to women specifically in technology. And yeah, I wanna pick up on that last point too, because you know the types of positions available, the types of careers, you are the US CIO program leader for Deloitte Consulting and Deloitte has a Deloitte CIO program. Tell us about your role, tell us about this program. Yeah, I'll start with uh, the actual program to give you some context, and then I'll, I'll uh, pivot into what my role is. Uh, the, the CIO program and the vision of the CIO program is really to deliver trusted personal experiences and relevant insights to technology leaders at the moments that matter most, and that matter most to them. Uh, we are at the forefront at really helping deliver insights that are focused on the questions CIOs have or that they are being asked by their executive teams and even the board. 
Uh, we're really pushing the vanguard on how we advise and guide CIOs to equip them to be even more successful in their roles. This spans everything from helping them think about what their strategic priorities are, how they fund technology investments and tell the rest of the organization the, the value story around tech investments, how they create a, a network of peers to serve as sounding boards, um, how they execute you know, uh, a framework on what emerging technologies to focus on, uh, as well as their own careers, uh, how they think about their career choices, their leadership development, and most importantly, their teams. How do they build tech teams that are uh, motivated by an engaged modern engineering culture? How do they upskill and drive tech fluency within their organizations? So with all of that, um, that the program does, uh, my role specifically is the experience director and I'm responsible for leading a very high performing team um, to help really build the programs, experiences and the insights that go along with that. Um, I also have the privilege of leading our research and insights on DNI in tech um, and publishing a biannual report um, or publication to really focus on the topics around DNI in tech, specifically around uh, gender parity and tech talent. So these are these are kind of the CIO position, right? As you were just talking about, these are you know these are relatively not relatively new, but they're newer positions. They're newer C-suite positions, right? They're newer leadership, sort of getting that in into the roles and that diversity is so important, not just in terms of gender, but you know, diversity generally. And yet the data that we've collected for our report shows that actually we're leading the way. So women are about 27% of CIOs across industries. You know, why do you why do you think that is and, and what are you seeing? You talked a little bit about kind of what the work you're doing and the, the roles they encompass, but what does this mean? It seems like a really great space for women to be entering into and, and talking about diversity D and I. Yeah, I think when you look across the C-suite, one, you're absolutely right. The CIO role is one of the newest um, C-suite roles uh, within an organization. And it's, pro it's the one that is evolving, at least in my perspective, the fastest. Um, and it is uh, the role that has the most gender diversity as well when you look across the C-suite ranks of Fortune 500 um, and similarly sized organizations. And really bolstering the leadership ranks with diverse candidates is one of the most, uh, I think, persistent challenges as well as uh, the, the most um, pressing priority for CIOs that we are hearing today. I think when you think about gender diversity and ge diversity across uh, all dimensions uh, for technology, it's often rooted in um, increased uh, innovation, uh, stronger financial performance, uh, healthier team dynamics, and higher productivity. And when you take those into account, especially in the context of a technology team, that is truly the mandate of technology uh, today to really drive business outcomes. And having a diverse team really helps with that. You know, and as, as the role really shifts from being a back office, kind of keeping the lights on operator to driving business strategy, enabled by IT solutions, um, tech teams can really benefit from diversity at all ranks. Um, you know, and, and even coming up with technology solutions that are rooted in um, equitable, equitable outcomes uh, for customers, um, ethical tech, especially when you think about emerging technology such as AI is also important. And, you know, when I think about kind of the, the trend we're seeing or in the increase of uh, women in technology across the board, it's, it's you know, it, it is, there's some business outcomes that are heavily uh, propelling um, that trend that we're seeing. The business outcomes are propelling it. And what is the, you know, what is that, what does that pathway look like as well, right? Because it's sometimes I think when people look at positions and they look at tech positions or at the tech industry and they're like, there's all these like requirements I need to fill. There's all these absolute things I need to do. I don't know if I'm exactly, you know, qualified and, and kind of what does this mean? What do those pathways look like? Are they as narrow or as broad or, or what does it look like from where you're sitting? You know, similar to the conversation we we're having right before we started the session, um, it's an exciting time to be tech curious. It's an exciting time to um, think about a career in technology because of so the various pathways that, that we've outlined in the report, especially kind of thinking about, you know, a pathway in analytics, a pathway in um, 
uh, pure infrastructure um, and even being a, a, from the business side and helping um, bridge that gap between technology and business um, strategy. I think, uh, you know, when we think about pathways, the big focus on the organization and all parts of the organization to really be tech fluent um, and create kind of upskilling approaches um, provides a huge opportunity. Um, you know, as we're talking about what's different in 2022, um, and then as we go into 2023 is also the commitment we're seeing among technology leaders to DNI, um, to promoting DNI uh, within their organizations and increasingly looking at their own processes and teams and policies to make sure that we are bringing more women into the fold within IT organizations. Yeah, that commitment is incredibly important. You're talking about that commitment to DNI, and that's why we're really interested in looking at kind of what do these numbers look like, right? From from that position and moving up the CIO, you know, the chief technology officers, we're hearing a lot about sort of cybersecurity and cybersecurity not just in the C-suite, but at the board level and the importance of that really kind of rising. Is that what you're seeing in what you're working on as well? Um, cybersecurity continues to be a priority for not just CIOs, the organization and the board at all levels, right? The, the evolution of, of the threat is, is pressing. It's real. Uh, when you think about ransomware, when you think about um, the, the challenges that organizations are feeling at, uh, facing as just, you know, cyber technology evolves. Um, so there is a real need for um, diverse talent in those spaces and there's not enough skills. Uh, and so the upskilling part of what I mentioned becomes increasingly important. Yeah, we have a women's cyber governance collaborative where we're training 25 women at the C-suite level and 75 women at the board level in cybersecurity expertise and sort of putting out the call. We have an application on our website but for that reason of saying there are there are women there, but let's get that certification, that skill set from sort of the upskilling as you're talking about. Yeah, and Glenn, I think that spans all capabilities within technology today. Cyber being a, a, a very key area of technology that uh, you know technology talent and skills is is lacking, and there's there's definitely a demand for it. But I think that spans everything from AI to cloud. Um, to a number of aspects of kind of emerging technologies when we look across, you know, the tech talent shortage. So as you work with, you know, we talked a little bit about what sort of, you've talked a little bit about what's happening, what companies can do. So we've sort of talked about top level commitment, right? Like that CEO commitment, that sort of C-suite commitment to DEI, to really sort of creating, what are other things that you see companies and organizations doing to really ensure that as you said, there's a business case for this. This drives sort of profits, profits, and and a whole bunch of other business efficiencies. What what can companies and organizations do to ensure that they, you know, have a diverse talent at these at these C-suite tech position levels? Yeah, great question. And so just to rattle off some more numbers, we talked about the 25 percent or 27 percent um, at the C-suite. There's even fewer um, Black and Latinx workers holding tech jobs, right? So I know this is focused on women, but that's an important dimension of, of diversity on, on teams, just underrepresented minorities across the board. Um, and even when companies do a better job on uh, recruiting at the onset and creating a pipeline of uh, women in the ranks, maybe at lower levels within the organization, um, a higher percentage of women then men leave at the mid-manager level. And so when you think about the strategies and approaches that organizations can employ or set in place, um, it, it spans recruiting to retention. How do you retain that? And a lot of that is um, due to uh, mid-career tech talent leaving because of unsupportive working um, environments, widespread bias, um, either conscious or unconscious. Um, undermining behavior from uh, from management and competing priorities. If I think about my own career in tech, I, I go back, uh, you know, now almost 15 years ago to when I was uh, doing business school part time and working with an IT. I had a very supportive team of all men, um, but nonetheless very supportive in helping me manage that flexibility. And that was a huge reason in why I stayed in technology. And when I think about even my career at Deloitte in technology, that's the same reason. We have to create environments where women feel supported, um, even if we're still working on getting the parity right. Um, you know, I'll 
we did a recent 2020 survey around workforce and technology, and it confirmed that gender bias remains an ongoing concern. So thinking about the language you're using, thinking about, you know, when a woman has other responsibilities, whether it's school or childcare, um, making sure that our environments are supporting that. Um, you know, I think again, what what I mentioned on the commitment from DNI on DNI from tech leaders is so important. Um, but we have to think about that mid-level women career track and what we're going to do to get to, uh, them kind of over that hump to the C-suite leadership positions as well. I'll ask that question that sort of we all have been talking about, right? As we sort of you know, with with the onset of COVID, right? We've had the kind of rise of the use of tech by everybody, I will call it, right? But also sort of the great resignation, you know, or the lean in the report that came out a couple of weeks ago saying, you know, women are leaving, you know, at exactly this kind of the mid and the high levels. Are you seeing sort of any any changes in trying to kind of adapt to that, use that, or or sort of, you know, fix that kind of either mid-level or think more consciously about how you're integrating your workforce and able to kind of use people's talents and skills so that they can stay around and be effective. Absolutely, and I, I think it's an interesting time, right? Especially as organizations are grappling with um, the flexibility part of the equation as well as kind of this, this dynamic. And I, I did read the Lean In um, report. There's this, there's this um, tension or healthy tension between people who want to be with their teams. They want to build relationships, but they also want the flexibility of working from home. Um, and while it's a healthy tension, I think it provides a very interesting opportunity today to really think about what that means for women in technology specifically, right? What, how are we going to use that opportunity or that healthy tension to reevaluate our processes and how we're structured and what work looks like within IT organizations? Yeah, I think it's, it's an opportunity, right? Right now to really kind of think through that and get past kind of whatever 15 years ago was called the Google effect, right? But hopefully get past that and kind of work on that tension and how, how do you marry those two really wanting to work and be with your team and really wanting the flexibility. Right. Um, and it's, it's a great moment in time, right? To be thinking yeah. through them. Absolutely. And I think, you know, the other thing, I'm sorry, you can hear my partner outside. <laughs> well, the other thing that's really important, part, uh, a really important part of this is, you know, we're looking at external data and kind of the, the broader picture of what the data is telling us around women in tech and DNI organizations themselves have a whole wealth of data that's going to help navigate their own challenges and priorities. So we're seeing a lot of CIOs really lean in and think about, you know, what is the data within their own organization telling them um, about their own numbers within, you know, within um, various dimensions. And, you know, I'm proud of our uh, Deloitte transparency report that highlights some of this because it also holds um, organizations accountable to making change. So I, I don't want to lose sight of that, but I think a, a great starting point is to really kind of look internal to see what data you have um, to help prioritize some of your efforts. Yeah, and we've been talking a lot about that too, as you know, and what Women Business Collaborative is you, you, you have the data, look at it, use it, right? But also we're calling for data transparency, right? You know, within the organization outside, so you can really kind of act on it and 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 see how you can make change right to, because that's what you use data for right yeah data data is only as good as the insights and the action that it drives absolutely well that's a perfect way <laughs> thank you Angeli, for your insights it's a perfect way to end this and please visit our website to read the women corporate tech executive report which will be released on november 10th but also go to our website and look at the Women's Cyber Governance Collaborative, WCGC, and apply if you would like, if you're a C-suite executive or board member and would like to get that cybersecurity training because we're confirming the trainings as we speak. And that's all we have time for today. Uh, we will invite you to wbcollaborative.org to learn more about WBC's initiative to increase women in the C-suite and boardroom, to address the underrepresentation of women in areas like technology, and to advance a pipeline of women leaders to bring gender and pay parity, diversity, equity, and inclusion to the business landscape. Join us weekly to keep up to date on our progress, the movement for gender parity in business, and the latest issues by following us on social media at WB Collaborative on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And join me in thanking Anjali for 
your participation in the Women Corporate Tech Executive Report, our Women in Tech Action Initiative, but your participation today in LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gwen. It was a pleasure. And good luck with all the work you're doing. It sounds really exciting and you've got a lot on your plate. Thank you. It is exciting. Have a good day. Have a good day.